Welcome to Pusani FM News at 10. I'm Esther Saul. Rival parties expressed strong disagreement Wednesday over whether the government made the right move in asserting its control over deciding whether to deploy a U.S. anti-missile defense system in South Korea. On Tuesday, South Korea's defense ministry warned the neighboring nations against trying to influence Seoul's security policy, saying we'll make a decision based upon our own judgment after putting security interests before anything else. The remarks were widely seen as a response to China's growing concerns over the possible deployment of a terminal high-altitude area defense or THAAD battery in South Korea. Seoul maintains that the issue has never come up for consideration, but Washington has previously hinted he would deploy a THAAD battery in South Korea, which is home to about 28,500 American troops. Shinzo Abe must include a clear apology for the country's sexual enslavement of women during World War II in an address he is expected to deliver at a joint meeting of the U.S. Congress, an American congressman said Wednesday. Abe has sought a congressional invitation to address a joint session of the House and the Senate when he visits Washington next month. Indications have grown he would get the chance despite objections that the nationalist leader is not qualified for the honor. Opponents have accused Abe of attempting to whitewash Japan's militaristic past and wartime atrocities, especially the country's sexual enslavement of women for its troops during World War II, and is still refusing to clearly apologize for the crime. Abe would be the first to a joint meeting of Congress. of the Korea Hydro and Nuclear Power Company has conducted a radioactive prevention drill for Kodi Unit 4 at the emergency countermeasure room of the number 2 power station yesterday. The prevention drill was performed to test and evaluate emergency responsibilities of 37 emergency response staff at Kodi Unit 2. Such radioactive prevention drills are conducted four times annually in each nuclear power station. The Busanjin police station recently arrested a 48-year-old man on charges of threatening to carry out distributed denial-of-service attacks, or DDOS, against Cheongwadae, official residence of the South Korean head of state. The suspect, identified only by his surname Ho, called the several Busan regional police stations from a payphone beginning at 6 p.m. yesterday and threatened to execute DDOS attacks against Cheongwadae at 8 p.m. Mr. Ho was caught by the police an hour after placing the calls, and it has been revealed that during the investigation that he has a history of making two false reports last year. The Busan National University Hospital has reported that 8,067 foreign patients were treated at the main building of the hospital last year, an increase of 49% compared to 2013. The total number of foreign patients at all branches, including the Yangsan branch, totaled to about 13,300. A special ward that solely for foreign patients were recently constructed, and commercial agreements with hotels in the area have helped patients and their families obtain affordable accommodation while staying at the hospital. to fight terrorism without mercy following a gun attack on the Bardo Museum in the capital Tunis that killed 19 people. 17 tourists were killed in the attack, including visitors from Japan, Italy, Colombia, Australia, France, and Spain, officials said. Two Tunisians, one a police officer, were also killed in the Wednesday's attack. Security forces have killed the two gunmen, but are continuing the search for accomplices. Officials say that more than 40 people, including tourists and Tunisians, were injured. Busan, Busan, Changwon, and Gyeongnam.
and it is going to stop raining by this afternoon in all of these regions. Finders levels are good. Waves will rise from 1 to 4 meters in the seas. The highs in Busan is 16 degrees. It is currently 9 degrees here in Busan. That's all for this hour's news. Thank you for joining us. Now you're listening to Busan EFM.